Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is going to be a two-part series of the absolute minimum and basic instruments that you should know about in order to fly a flight simulator. So this first part, we're gonna go over the minimum instruments that you need to know. And those are the attitude indicator, the altimeter, the airspeed indicator, the compass, the manifold pressure, and in the next series, we're gonna go over the basics, which are the slip skid indicator, the vertical speed indicator, trend lines, rate of turn, trim, angle of attack, fuel, flaps. So be sure to tune into the second version so that you can see the basics. But for now, we'll start with the absolute minimum instruments. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're gonna go over is the attitude indicator. And in the airplane flying handbook, it says that the attitude indicator is an instrument which uses an artificial horizon and miniature airplane to depict the position of the airplane in relation to the true horizon. So these uh, yellow arrows here are to depict the wings and the yellow section here, more or less the nose. And as you can see, this is the horizon right here. You have all this, it can be green, brown, orange, whatever, uh, to the blue sky. That is the horizon line right there. So it's telling us the airplane's attitude compared to the horizon. And it goes on to say the attitude indicator senses roll as well as pitch, which is the up and down movement of the airplane. So the roll is the wings going left and right, which I'll go ahead and depict now. I'm on autopilot, so I'll go ahead and take that off. And so this is a roll to the left, and this is a roll to the right. And as you can see, the attitude indicator shows the airplane's attitude compared to the horizon. So that is your roll, and then it also depicts your pitch, which is the up and down motion. You can see we're very nose high. We're going high in the sky and then if we pitch down you can see it goes down towards the ground like that so that is the attitude indicator and this magenta line right here just tells you more or less what the gps is doing or whatever you have set in the hsi uh, you don't really need to know about that but if you're wondering what that magenta arrow is it's kind of a guide, it's the flight director, which tells you how to fly in order to achieve what you're trying to do here. Now another version of the attitude indicator is depicted here. This is the steam gauge version. So you do have the electronic type like this, and you also have the steam gauge. The reason there are two in this aircraft is because this is the backup attitude indicator. If something went wrong with uh, the electrical system like the AHARS, then you could rely on this. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here and let you see so if I pitch up the airplane goes up if I pitch down the airplane goes down towards the brown and then if I roll to the left it goes like that and if I roll to the right it goes like that so it's exactly the same thing but in a steam gauge version uh, there may be a few others that look slightly different, but once you've seen one or two of them, they're easy to find and, and easy to understand. One thing to note is that in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, it does have gauges on the external view for you. However, it doesn't have an attitude indicator. So you have to fly VFR and have the horizon in sight in order to know what attitude you are in. Now there are other things you can look at, such as the heading, we can see we're in a turn and the altitude we can see that well we're pretty level but now we're climbing and we can kind of relate that to the airplane here and the actual horizon the next thing you need to know is the altimeter and that's right here and according to the airplane flying handbook it says the altimeter is a flight instrument that indicates altitude by sensing pressure changes so here we are at 8,000 feet msl above mean sea level so the ground may be 4,000 feet above sea level, which means that 8,000, we're only 4,000 above ground level. 
So that's something to note. Just because you're at 8,000 does not mean that you're 8,000 feet above the ground. That's according to mean sea level. So you should know about how high in elevation the terrain is in order to pick a good altitude. Now it did uh, say a little bit about how it senses the altitude and that's by pressure. You can see down here, this is inches of mercury, 29.92. You do have to change this whenever a uh, tower tells you to or what, whenever you get a weather update. Uh, but that's something that you don't necessarily have to pay attention to right now. Uh, later on down the road, you can look into that and I'm sure I'll make a video about it as well. So in short, this is your altitude. So just like the attitude indicator has a backup, the altimeter also has a backup. This steam gauge is telling us that we are at 8,000 feet. You can see here on the strip, it says 8,000. To read the steam gauge, we have to know that the skinniest with the arrow on top is for tens of thousands, the fat is for thousands, and the other skinny is for hundreds. So here we are at 8,000. 0, 100 and you can see we're below 10 so it's we're not even going to read this first one now let's say that we go up to 11,000 feet let me go ahead and pause and i will get to 11,000 feet so you can see what that looks like now i want to show you as the altimeter is moving so we're moving up fairly rapidly this is the hundreds of feet here's the thousands of feet so right now we're at 9,500 coming to 9,600 and this here is almost at the 10 so as it keeps on coming up, this one will come closer to the 10. And eventually this arm will be here. The fat arm will be at the zero and the hundreds will be at the zero as well. I have it on autopilot. Unfortunately, Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, the autopilot is a little wonky. So we might go up and down, up and down once we hit it. But who knows, maybe it'll work out perfectly. And here we are coming really close to that 10,000 marker. And that is basically there. Like we mentioned before, the external view gives us the uh, altitude as well. So here is the altimeter here, and you can see we are at 10,000 feet. The next instrument we're gonna look at is the airspeed indicator. And we use this gauge to identify whether we're going too fast, too slow, when to put flaps down, and when we're about to enter into a stall. It's a little bit confusing because the airspeed indicator isn't your true speed. We have this down here, the TAS, which is the true airspeed, and that's how fast you're flying through the air. Then you also have your GS, which is your ground speed. That's how fast you're going over the ground. So your indicated airspeed is not necessarily a speed, but we do pay attention to it for our maneuvers. All right, so just like the other instruments, we do have a steam gauge version of the airspeed indicator. Here's our strip one. Our steam gauge looks the same. We have 120, 130, about 131 or two. And look at that, 131 or 132, right about there. As you can see, they are color coded. We have red up here, yellow, green, and white. This as well has that. We have our red, yellow, green, and further down is white, but we do have to get a little bit slower to see that. I'm gonna go ahead and use the steam gauge version since it has all the colors depicted and we'll go over what those mean. So to start, we have the white section, which is the flaps operating range. And you can see here, just above 60 is the bottom of that. And what that means, the white bottom is the stalling speed when you have flaps configured. And up here is where you want to operate, uh, the maximum you want to operate the flaps in. Then we have the green version right here. So if you don't have flaps in, this is going to be your stall speed right there. So that's about 65, 78 maybe, 68 knots. And everything is in knots. Uh, you can see here it says knots, not in miles per hour. And so the green version, or the green arc, I should say, is the uh, structural cruising speed. So this is where you want to be 
uh, say you're in turbulence, you want to stay within this green arc. Now the yellow arc, the yellow arc stands for a structural warning area. So you definitely don't want to be here unless the air is nice and clear, uh, no bumps or anything like that. And then you have the red line up here, which is the never exceed speed. At that point, you are really asking for it. So don't go past that. And we can see here, we are in the yellow. Uh, we could actually slow down a bit. I'll show you what that looks like. We're gonna pull back the power. And here we are dropping green. And there's that white arc. You can see here's the green, there's the white. And I'll show you what a stall looks like. So we do not have flaps in. So eventually we're gonna start stalling out. I have autopilot on, so it should continue to try to adjust. But the stall warning, ho uh, stall warning horn is a high pitch sound. You'll hear it in just a few seconds right here. So at the bottom of the green, Right about now, there you go. There's the stall. And you can see we're right at the bottom of the green and as we come out of it, the stall warning horn stops. Now let's say we had flaps all the way down and it would be this line here that you would start hearing the stall warning horn. And just to reiterate, we also have the airspeed indicator out here on the external version. Uh, it will show you what speed you're at, also shows your speed down here, and it is color-coded as well. The next instrument we're gonna talk about is the compass, and here on the HSI we have a top-down view. So you can see we're heading east. This arrow shows us the exact uh, direction that we're heading, so we are heading 092 right now. If I turn to the left, the compass will start to turn. We can come all the way to here, 060. I'll go ahead and level out. There we are. Went past it just a little bit, but now we're in a more northeastern direction. We also do have a backup version of this located right over here. And this is a true magnetic compass. So it does have a few errors associated with it. I'm not sure if Microsoft Flight Simulator shows them. Uh, but one thing to note, see we are here on the eastern direction. We are on 060. But if we want to head east, you think, OK, I'm on 060. I want to turn left. But if I turn left, you'll see we're moving the opposite direction. So when you're using the magnetic compass here, you actually want to turn the opposite direction. So if I turn right, the compass will go to the left. Now ultimately it does work out, but it is something that kind of confuses people. So right now we're in a northern direction. We can see here, about north, we are going to the east. So ultimately they do sync up, but this is kind of inverted. Here we are eastbound. And there we are eastbound. And here we are in the external version again. We can see we have our HSI here, which has our compass headings. All right, the last instrument we're gonna talk about is the manifold pressure gauge. Now, usually this is depicted in inches of manifold pressure, but in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, they have load and it's in a percentage. So how you read this is it is in 66% of the throttle. So if I push it forward, we got 100% throttle. If I bring it back about halfway-ish, there we are around 50. Bring it all the way back, it's going to go to idle. Maybe not quite zero, but pretty close. You can see the indicated airspeed uh, correlates directly with how much throttle you have in or how much load percent you have. So if I go to say about 50%, then I would guess we're gonna be right around 80 or 90 knots. 
So you can kind of play around with how much percent of the load uh, correlates with what indicated airspeed you're going to get. If you're on the external mode, you can see that the instrument here, it's actually the power as well as the RPMs. So this one right here shows us the RPMs, and this one right here shows us the power setting. Here we have the percentage, so we're at 70%, which if we look at the green arc, there's maximum, that's yeah, about 70%. As we increase it, that goes forward all the way to 100. If we pull it back, there we are at about 35%. And you can see the RPM needle moves as well. The further you go up, the more the RPM goes. The further back, the less the RPM is. And that sums it up for our part one of this two-part series, the absolute minimum instruments that you should know. Those were again the attitude indicator, the altimeter, the airspeed indicator, the HSI compass, the manifold pressure, and next time in the basics we will go over the slip skid indicator, vertical speed indicator, trend lines, rate of turn, trim, angle of attack, fuel, and flaps. We'll see you then.